Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today and next time, I would like to tell you a little bit about one of the classical applications of representation theory. Actually, not so classical, maybe started in the 70s. Uh, let me still call it classical uh, applications of representation theory, namely to random walks and probability theory, which is a pretty cool application. I mean, representation theory and probability theory, that sounds very different. Um, but it's actually highly related, and I'm trying to explain it as basic as possible. In particular, rep uh, well, representation theory is also beyond me, obviously, but probability theory is really beyond me. So I'm trying to explain it without using too many terminologies from probability theory. You will see in the end how it enters, uh, but we actually don't need to know this. And my toy model here that I'm going to use is known as the Ehrenfest model, which is on my next slide. So let's just get going. Keep in mind that in the end, we want representation theory around, and we will see representation theory around. OK, so the Ehrenfest model is a really, really simple model. Um, basically, you have two boxes, if you want. You can think of them as particles, or just uh, an urn and balls, or whatever you like. And you have a certain number of balls, uh, particles, whatever you want to your box A and box uh, B, N of them. And in each step in time, whatever that means, one of them jumps to the other. Right, so we have two boxes, and we have n balls in total, particles, balls. I will call them balls. Um, and at each step, they just one is randomly chosen, whatever randomly means, and one jumps to the other. And basically, random here should mean every ball is equal to any other, and it's well, this one could jump jump over, as in my illustration, but it could also be this one that jumps over or whatever. Right. So let me spot this place in time. You just jump over one ball, and you would like to know the long-term behavior of the system. Mm, you might make some guess here that it kind of stabilizes in a certain sense, um, but we want to model that mathematically. So if you do this in real life, it will really stabilize in 50-50% kind of um, kind of uh, well, balls, particles or whatever in one box and the other. Um, but in mathematics, we kind of want to model it, right? So we want to have a model, and this model is known as the Ehrenfest model. Well, pretty simple setup, I hope, and a very, very satisfying uh, solution using representation theory. We'll see what it is. So what I would like to do is I would like to model it using a random walk on the Cayley graph or on a Cayley graph. And it will be a Cayley graph for a very, very simple group. So it's Z to the 2Z to the N. So these are basically A and B, right? And N particles that move around. Basically, that's what it is. If you don't know what a Cayley graph is, uh, well, we only need to know the Cayley graphs for those groups anyway, and they are really, really simple. And I'm choosing a specific one. So the experts might know that Cayley graphs depend on the choice here, and I'm choosing the, the following, uh, the, just the hypercubes. So I have a certain number of colored edges, and the number of colors is just N. So for N equals 1, I have just one color, which is blue. For N equals 2, I have two colors, so blue and green, whatever kind of color that is. For N equals 3, I have blue, green, let's call it green, blue, green, and this reddish color. For n equals four, there's a purple one somewhere, which is basically not distinguishable from the blue anymore, but this one is purple and this one is blue, for example. Anyway, and everything lives on a n-dimensional hypercube. So for n equals two, what is a hypercube? Hypercube is a square, and this is how it looks like. Uh, this is just a graph. It's slightly strange notation that I'm using here. So this just says there goes an, an error in both directions. This is just kind of funny code notation. So here's an error in both directions. Everywhere is an error in both directions. Just absolutely everywhere is an error in both directions. Uh, this is the cube, which n equals 3 is. The cube is the hypercube for n equals 3. And this is my, or actually Mathematica's, I'm not quite sure whether I should call it failed, but this is supposed to be a four-dimensional cube. Um, I'm not sure whether I can see it, but it, it, it it's just it's abstractly a four-dimensional cube. It's really just the Cayley graph here is just a four-dimensional cube, uh, sorry, an n-dimensional cube in general with n colors of the edges. And that's it. And we kind of want to use a random walk on this graph, which just, just means we start somewhere and we randomly choose a color and use that edge to go to the next. Uh, vertex and then again randomly choose a color and you get the pattern right so i'm starting here i randomly choose a color my randomly chosen color is red so i go to this place i randomly choose a color my random chosen color might be again red so i would go back uh, or whatever it might have been green i would have jumped here right so i kind of a random walk on those scaling graphs okay great and what is this actually modeling 
Well, it's modeling the following, the, what is called diffusion. So let's di discover diffusion together. That's a funny experiment, uh, which I highly recommend. Maybe I shouldn't recommend any experiments. There's probably something dangerous about this experiment. Don't do this at home. But anyway, here's the experiment. You can discover diffusion yourself. You just take a perfume bottle, uh, whatever you like kind of perfume. You put it in one corner of, of, a, of, a, of a room, probably not a too big room, otherwise, uh, it's you won't you won't get any results, but anyway. So let's say your room right now that you're in, maybe it's not too big, and you open it and you go to the other end of the room and you wait for a little bit. And what you will discover is what is called diffusion. Right? So very simple, very simple idea. Kind of the particles diffuse around and eventually go to the other side of um uh, well, <laughs> the, the room. And the Aeon Fest model really is just the diffusion model, kind of the easiest one you can imagine, which is that. Well, two boxes and everything diffuses from one point to the other. Um, what I'm trying to say here is the Aeonfest model, so diffusion can be modeled as a random walk on a Cayley graph. And this is kind of just the tip of the iceberg. Um, the Aeonfest model is just the easiest one you can imagine, which is not completely silly, which is not completely different. But anyway, so uh, don't try this at home. As I said, there's probably something dangerous about this, this experiment. But if you want to discover diffusion, here's an experiment. And it really, really just behaves like some random walk on a certain group uh, that you can need to cook up for the corresponding situation at hand, of course. Okay, so diffusion is random walk, and random walk is representation theory. It's kind of kind of cool, uh, well, from perfume bottles to representation theory, if you want. And the statement is the following. So for any Cayley graph and any really any Cayley graph for any set of an abelian group, you have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the eigenvalues and the simple characters. And you can actually write down the eigenvalues in terms of the simple characters by a closed formula. Amazing, which is really, really amazing, right? So for any type of those graphs, you can write down the eigenvalues in terms of closed formula, in terms of the simple characters. You could do something about the eigenvectors as well, which I'm not stating here, but just this is already pretty mind blowing. Um, and if you now think of as being a Cayley graph, being a diffusion model, then diffusion model, we'll do that on the next slide for you, is kind of determined by the characters of a simple, uh, the simple characters of a finite abelian group in this case. So how does it work in, in our example here? Well, so what you need to do is, so this is Z mod two to the three, right? So Z mod two to the three, which was given by the three dimensional cube. And well, you can just use code if you want to produce the character table. You could do this by hand, it's not so hard, but you can use also the magma code linked in the description, which you can run online. It will produce this table for you. So you have eight simple characters and eight conjugacy clauses. And the only thing you need to know is, because this depends on the set of generators. So where are the set of generators? So where are my generators? Uh, what is it? Blue and the color I forgot, it's red and green. Where are they in my table here? And it turns out that they are in the six, sevens and eights. Uh, what does it call them? So six, sevens and eights conjugacy clause in this case. And the only thing you need to do is then you just need to add those numbers and you get the eigenvalues. Three, uh, what is this? A one, this is minus one. This is one, this is minus one. This is one, minus one and minus three. And if I haven't miscalculated, it's exactly the eigenvalues for the graph. And this works in general. That's pretty cool. It's pretty simple. Really, really simple. And pretty, pretty cool, actually. So the simple characters determine the eigenvalues of those scaling graphs. And then they also determine kind of the long-term behavior of our little perfume experiment. So how does that work, actually? Well, as I said, I don't want to put in too many uh, probability theory. But basically, you need to associate a, a matrix to the graph. And it's really just the adjacency matrix of the graph. But that's not a probability matrix. So you scale everything by a probability. And here in my experiment, uh, my experiment, in, in this experiment, certainly not my experiment, in, in this experiment, kind of everything was equally likely. So uh, there's a one third chance at each edge to jump to wherever. So I just scale the matrix by one over three. And I was even too lazy. So one over three in this video is just 0 0.33. It's just the same. Okay. There's no approximation error. It is on spot on the same. Anyway, so this is the matrix. And then the long-term behavior of the, of the model is just given by 
taking the high power, uh, taking a high power of the matrix, and it will stabilize, which you can see from looking at the biggest eigenvalues. Um, in this case, the 15th power, I just decided to choose 15 randomly, basically stabilizes the situ this situation with uh, one over four, so one fourth in each second entry, right? So it yeah. depends a little bit whether you're even in odd situation, but that's about it. Uh, so scaling is your probability matrix and the eigenvalues determine the growth of this matrix and the growth of this matrix correspond in the model to the long-term behavior of the, of the system. So uh, whether your perfume particles go from one edge, one end of the co uh, one end of uh, the room to the other or not, that depends then on the model. So in, in this in this simple example, the simple characters then encodes the long-term behavior of the air first diffusion. And as I said, this is kind of just the tip of the iceberg. Okay, so point of this video was a little bit to give you a hint how apl applicable representation theory actually is. So this idea to use it in, in the terms of random walks originated in the uh, 1970s related to card shuffling problems. So you can also uh, model card shuffling as a diffusion problem if, if, you, if you want, like cards diffuse around um, on, as a random walk on a certain graph and you compute the characters. So for card shuffling, it's a bit more complicated. The characters you would need are the characters related to symmetric groups, like the shuffle group, if you want. Um, in this example, it was just really the easiest one I could find. And it's pretty cool actually. And then you can apply it to physics or whatever, whatever, where we want to apply it to. It's, it's pretty cool. And you always get a result like the simple characters in a certain combinatorial numerical way it will determine whatever. In this case, the long-term behavior of a diffusion system. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.